Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome. I am the Crypto Crow. And uh, today I, I'm basically just going to talk to you a little bit about what I've been doing. Uh, you know, having been in the crypto space since 2017, I've seen a lot. I've seen a lot of projects come and go. I've seen a lot of um, pipe dreams and scams and, and and you name it. OK, and, and obviously since 2017, 2018, the market has changed dramatically multiple times. We've watched market cycles and the ebbs and flow of those market cycles. We've watched major uh, disruptions in various industries, and we've watched major failures and attempts to disrupt various industries. And now we have uh, what what I, I honestly believe to be a very uh, dictatorial regime uh, running things uh, and, and, and blowing my mind literally at every turn. And in the midst of a lot of this, we're now seeing uh, banks struggling. We're seeing banks fold. We're seeing banks targeted based off of their friendliness to crypto. We're seeing cryptocurrencies being blamed for these banks, which I find absolutely repugnant, considering the fact that you know this this uh, zero reserve uh, banking system that we now have is is ultimately making it easier for these banks to have major, major issues if the sentiment of brick and mortar banking goes down, which it has. And what we've been seeing in the crypto space lately is a bit of a melt up where I have also been doing this, where I have been feeling less confident and less comfortable in the bank uh, and and more confident and more comfortable in Bitcoin or Cardano uh, as a store of value as a uh, because I'm at this point I'm not necessarily uh, con concerned with the price shooting to the moon right now, but I am noticing that as the banks are struggling as politics are playing out and pointing the finger uh it, it, it's funny because in, in almost all politics and it doesn't matter what side of the fence you're on all politics loves to point the finger at the other guy when in reality all they do is go back and forth against one another and in the midst of their back and forth we the people of this country are ultimately the ones screwed at every turn as they make decisions that empower themselves enrich themselves and embolden themselves in a climate of corruption and greed that always seems to end up in similar terms as the ancient Romans and any other uh, empire that's reigned before them. And for whatever reason, we never learn. And why don't we ever seem to learn? Why don't we ever seem to learn to the, from the mistakes of the past? Well, because it doesn't really matter to the majority of these people, because they're typically long gone and retired before the damage that they've created affects them or affects their families or affects anyone else in major, major ways. This is generational in a lot of regard. And it's also one of the reasons why I'm into Bitcoin and Cardano and just cryptocurrencies in general, because it is generational. And I believe that the decisions I'm making the debt today are ultimately gonna help my family for generations to come. And so I, I am very confident in putting uh, money into Bitcoin right now. I've continued averaging in to Cardano. I've bought some more Ethereum. And uh, I just bought another Bitcoin yesterday. Uh, and, and it's a difficult decision for many people right now because, and it's difficult for me because I'm thinking, okay, I made profits from the last market cycle and now I have this money sitting there and I have bills to pay and I, I don't really have any income for the most part right now. And I generally don't have much of an income at all during an entire bear market. So I'm living off of and trying to make the right decisions based off of what I have uh, until whenever I start making any kind of money again, whether paid segments start coming in, which I get emails constantly from people wanting to buy paid segments, but a lot of them are garbage. And a lot of them is just, you know, they're trying to figure out, they, they basically want a lot for nothing. You know what I mean? Because it's the bear market and everybody's bargain hunting and they're trying to get exposure for exposure for shitty projects and they don't honestly want to pay anything for it. And so, you know, I don't even really dive into a lot of the projects that get sent to me um, because I know that it's very likely they're garbage and, and, and they're low budget and they're low rent and they're just trying to, you know, do what they're trying to do. And I'm just not that interested. 
So, I, you know, but it hurts because I, I'm waiting for the for the sentiment to get to a point where, you know, more legitimate projects are looking to expand on their reach and expand on their news. And, and, and you know, and that's a great time for, for crypto YouTubers. And, and, and so... In the meantime, it's a scary idea that, uh, you know, these banks could just fall apart. And, and here's the thing, the banks are generally pretty safe. It's not necessarily the banks that are the problem. What the problem is the lack of liquidity uh, to a certain degree, because as more people start hedging their, their funds uh, and hedging their risk in the cryptocurrency space, that means there's less liquidity going into the banks, which is why it's crypto's fault that these banks are having a problem, you see, because we're trying, we're, we're, especially those of us that have been in crypto for a while, we seem to trust cryptocurrency and the technologies behind it more than we trust somebody who's making nine bucks an hour fat fingering our accounts and creating problems for us to deal with or the the general economic climate of today creating enough of a of a low sentiment in you know the banking industry and these like these banking cartels as we like to call them and and basically these elites that are controlling everything from you know how many eggs you can buy to 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 the cost of those eggs and the meat and the you know we see these dramatic changes happening across the board in the in the vein of um you know uh global warming and climate change and uh now we're starting to see a lot of illnesses and things that we know are related to one thing but we're being told they're related to something else that we've for whatever reason they've just started sprouting up these issues it's all nonsensical right but some people buy it and they eat it up and they they believe it all is truth because they're just you know, you ever see, you know, like the little dolls that you get when you're a kid and you squeeze their head and it's just nothing but air. That's the way I look at a lot of people nowadays, unfortunately. And it's a sad state of affairs because if anything, I'm, I'm able to really realize how many people truly don't know anything yet are extremely vocal about their feelings and about the way they think things are happening. But those of us who have spent literally over 20 years studying and researching all of the people and the projects and the agendas and everything that's been going on for decades, and we're witnessing the culmination of a lot of this planning and, 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 and pilfering uh, to a large degree, and, and we, we see it before our very eyes. And so it's easier for us to make sense of what's going on, and it's easier for us to connect the dots because we know what those dots are, where most people, they just they tune into something for 15 minutes to get their hate feed for the day and they run off spouting it at the local water cooler as they try and, and, and you know, explain their uh, grandiose ideas for, you know, how everything is this person's fault or that person's fault. And they really have no idea what they're talking about. But a lot of these are the same people that are making these bank runs because they're seeing Oh my gosh, I know crypto is a big thing and the government's blaming crypto and we're having these bank runs and what happened to Signature Bank? I don't really think Signature Bank was having that many problems, but it was a very crypto friendly bank. Why did they get shut down? Like literally shut down. What was the reason for that? A lot of people can't make any sense of that because it just doesn't make much sense other than it's a vehicle for people to utilize to get out of the finite banking industry, the, the banking cartel control, and into uh, the cryptocurrency markets, which is causing liquidity crises across the board. And then, then the bud, buzzwords associated with this liquidity crisis are causing people to make significant bank runs. But the bank runs that we're seeing are also millionaires and billionaires pulling significant assets all at once out of these banking uh, vehicles, these banks, right? So it's not necessarily the you's and the me's of the world that are running around pulling out the 50 grand we have in an account all at one time. It's the millionaires and billionaires who are basically in the know of something is the way I'm going to put it. They realize that this is a global monetary transition that's happening before our very eyes. And so what do we think is going to be the big savior of a lot of this? Well, CBDCs is 
I'm sure are going to be ushered in to answer the, the call of the banking liquidity crisis. And I'm sure there are going to be some incentives associated with people that are willing to adopt them. And they're going to say, no, 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 don't pull your money out of the banks. Don't make a bank run. Here's a crypto. This crypto will be easy to use. And you know what? We'll let you transition your crypto or your, your fiat currency that's currently sitting in your bank and we'll even give you a discount. Convert it all over into CBDC. Use this app for your phone or whatever to, to start keeping track of your account. And that's how we're going to operate from now on. And I think ultimately crypto is being targeted now um, with the regulation and with the SEC and with a lot of these groups because crypto isn't necessarily competition directly right now with the major banks and the US dollar because everybody is fighting to get more of that US dollar. Anytime we look at cryptocurrency, we think, we don't look at Cardano and say, oh, that's going to be worth 50,000 Satoshis tomorrow. We say we expect that to be worth like $5 tomorrow or $8 tomorrow. That's one of the reasons we're buying it and we're investing in it and we're holding it and we're staking it because we're trying to generate more so that someday we can sell it back into the U.S. dollar, which has to happen through the banking systems ultimately, right? So what happens is at some point, they don't want us trading cryptocurrency into the U.S. dollar. They're going to want us to trade it into the CBDC token so that they can track every dollar we've put into crypto and taken out of crypto in a more easily, uh, like, translucent way, a transparent way. They want to be able to see everything that we do, and ultimately, they want to have more control over what that is. That's going to... That's gonna, rub a lot of people the wrong way. We, we, we've seen, and there's an, an article that I was gonna go over at some point in the future about Ron DeSantis in Florida, Florida governor, basically wanting to you know make laws against CBDC adoption, and he's trying to rally other states to do the same. And that's because he is aware of the control that these CBDCs are going to have. But you know what? It doesn't really matter what Ron DeSantis does. On a federal level, it's coming. And I don't think anybody's going to stop it, regardless of the number of states that are going to have the balls to say, you know what? We don't believe we should have this kind of control or any government should have this kind of control over the individual finances of anybody, especially given the, the, the climate of politics today, where right means left and left means right and, you know, you know, when one party says this other party is doing a whole bunch of other stuff and they're the ones that are actually doing it behind the scenes, it's almost like a confession of guilt. Um, it, it's like everything is is like an upside down clown world. And I know that that reference is thrown around quite a bit, but it really is. You know, what it, it, outside of a dictatorship, where do you know, what countries do you know that do absolutely everything in their power to try and get rid of political rivals? I don't think there are any because that is an act of a dictatorial regime to to basically say this person is not only a political rival but is a uh, as a blockade or a a hindrance to our grand global agenda with multiple countries in play working towards the same agenda under the guidance and the pseudo leadership of a small number of people that gather every year or multiple times a year to lay out these plans and formalize the next steps of action. You, when you have somebody that's not in line with that because they would rather that the country they're from be powerful, dominant, you know, progressive and, and moving forward and doing really well financially, you know, as opposed to being a part of a global group of countries that are all kind of feeding off of each other, which which is the best route? I don't know. I you know, I'm not a politician and I don't study global economics enough to truly understand and make a call. I just call it how I see it. And I see an individual who's been standing in the way of a regime that ultimately wants us to own nothing, be happy, and eat crickets because everything else is bad for the ozone and bad for climate. So it's really a question of what kind of life do you want to live? Do you prefer to be free? Do you prefer to make decisions for yourself? Or do you prefer to have every element and aspect of your life monitored, controlled, and ultimately guided based off of a small number of people that believe you should live and act and be a certain way or else? That 
call it what you will, but that's ultimately what's transpiring. And there are some people that are adamantly against that way of life for a society of free people in this country, which is what it's ultimately been built for. And it's also why we have things like the Constitution that have been put into place to protect us from tyrannical regimes that may want to hinder on our rights and hinder on our freedoms and, and basically stop that uh, process from continuing. And so when I think of the CBDCs and I think of a lot of the changes on a monetary level that are happening right now, I just feel safer in, in Bitcoin and Cardano. And so, you know, for the time being, that's ultimately where I'm, I'm you know, I, I'm maintaining my, my, my positions in the banks because I have bills to pay. I can't pay my, my bills with Bitcoin and Cardano yet, right? So, you know, at some point, I'm sure I'm going to have to pay them with CBDC tokens. Maybe that takes another year or two. Um, but, uh, you know, I think a lot of things are going to be changing in dramatic ways uh, by 2024. I truly do. And by 2025, the the, the fallout, the, um, you know, I think we could have a pretty significant melt-up period. And, 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 you know, we'll have to see because there's a lot of stuff happening and I'm trying to keep abreast of a lot of it. Uh, but ultimately that's all, that's what I'm doing. I'm, I'm working on getting back into bot trading. I'm trying to just stay calm and, and continue to educate myself on the moves that are being made, um, not just on a local or national level, but on an international level, because the, the plans and the agendas that are being put in place or that are not, I mean, they've been in place for a while, but are finally um, coming to fruition in a multitude of ways since 2020, let's just say, uh, I think it's probably going to get significantly worse than it before it gets better. And so, you know, the question is, what are these regulations going to say? How are these regulations going to screw the public out of being able to empower themselves through cryptocurrency and, 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 and ultimately empower people to hedge their, their risk in, in, you know, other assets such as cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin or Ethereum or Cardano for that matter? And it's a scary time, it really is. And, and it's even uncomfortable for me because in a world where things make sense and it's easy to draw a straight line, well, it's easier to predict what a potential outcome may be. But when the world seems to have been seemingly flipped on its head, where just about everything that happens is completely nonsensical to the layman or to the general individual within a specific society, we, 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 we struggle to make sense of things and it's more difficult to try and, and answer our own questions because the right answer today could very well be racist tomorrow or uh, some sort of derogative term associated with it. You know, uh, maybe it makes us a conspiracy theory. If, if we feel, well, it's uh, Bitcoin's been going up on a steady cycle for, you know, since 2009 and um, the dollar's only been going down. And I feel better putting my money in an asset that's continued to climb even through the ebbs and flows on a grand scale um, than keep my money in an asset that just continues to be de valued every time our government turns on the printing press to bail out this bank or bail out that bank or to, you know, give, you know, uh, insect sexual habit studies of insects, uh, you know, $20 million because, uh, you know, whatever, right? Then, then maybe I'm just considered a conspiracy or maybe even now I'm considered a domestic terrorist because I believe I'd rather have my money in Bitcoin than the U.S. dollar sitting in a bank as they're going uh, belly up. And, and that's the nature of our climate today, where if you're trying to do anything to protect yourself against an agenda that is ultimately wanting to, well, let's just say encapsulate us and keep us within the, an easy realm of control, well, then we're bad people because then we're, 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 we're making selfish decisions because we don't see the value of X, Y, or Z as it pertains to the grander number of people in the world and all kinds of other shit. I'm not with it. And, and you know, I study this stuff day in and day out, uh, all night, 
uh, and have for decades. And I feel like I have a much better handle on what's been happening, what's going to be happening than the majority of people in this country, to be quite frank with you. And it doesn't matter how many p people on whatever side seem to believe the same thing. Hive mind doesn't necessarily mean you are of the correct mind or that the combination of all of you somehow have things figured out because you've continued to regurgitate headlines from the latest liberal news news channels day in and day out all over Twitter and Facebook. So it is what it is. Uh, I would love to see things change, but unfortunately for the time being, I do believe they're going to get worse before they get better. And I just feel a little bit better in crypto than I do anything else. So until next time, guys, crow your coins and I'll see you soon.